for me, it was quite a high concept script in terms of we, we, the dynamic is we've got a guy, he's got a skill, we need to kill these guys in a certain way, um, and each one needs to be horrible. How horrible do we go? You know, and, and, and Jonathan was like, horrible. I want this to be one of the hardest hit films of the year. It gives you spasm, vomiting. It makes your insides feel like they're on fire. But this is liquid form. And this is what I'm going to stick in your veins. It makes for a much slower process. You're going to be begging me to put a bullet inside you. With a film like this, we have a responsibility to show that violence is violent. Um, I hate these films where uh, the violence looks like it doesn't hurt. Because it does, and people should take it more seriously. So I thought, how can I find these tortures and I went into that dark place. We've all got it. And I thought, if something had happened to the people I love, and I think this was a lot of where Vendetta and Snowman had come from, it was a lot of where Vendetta came from was, if someone did something to the people I love, like if someone did something to my wife, so I love my wife and she's an angel and she's the purest soul and she's massively supportive and she is perfect. She's the perfect angel. If that was taken away from me, what would I do if I knew who did it? I found it. If I was a torturer, what things would I do to these guys? And I, and I, I, was, getting, I was getting into it. And I just had a really dark day. And I was like, what do they do to me? And they come around to my flat and they do this to my dog. And they do this to my wife and they do this. And I was like, what do I do? What do I fucking do to them people? And I really got into that. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. It's a horrible day, and I gave my, gave my wife a big cuddle when she came home that day. The kill scenes in this movie are terrifying. There's, Reynolds has got a very dark side to his imagination, um, and, and I love him for it. I mean, you know, he's such an inventive writer, and he's come up with these very clever, very brutal, very hard-hitting death scenes um, and, and torture scenes, and they're, they're kind of the, the, the key to the movie. You know, like a slasher film has a kill every 15 minutes, I guess this probably does as well. Um, and, and he structured them in such a way that they build and build and build in their kind of nastiness um, until a sort of crescendo of violence at the end. Um, he's a smart but fucked up guy. The great thing about these torture scenes is before I do what I do, and one of them is with cement down the throat, is I talk to them. Oh, they're bound, they're gagged, they're not going nowhere. It's my little moment, their little last moment in life. And that, this is what really turned me on about the script, just that beauty of just sitting there calmly and talking to someone, knowing. We both know they're gonna die. Where was we? You're gonna love this. <laughs> and the whole cement scene where um, I'm just giving him a lesson on cement and where it originates and that it's a binder. In the general sense of the word, cement is a binder. It's a substance that sets and hardens independently. It's just, it's, it's, as an actor, it's, it's, it's what it's, it's just, like, love that shit. You know, I'm so calm. And he's obviously just like, you know, what, okay, what the fuck, you know? And I'm just giving him a little lesson before I'm gonna pop it down his fucking throat. Traces back to the Romans. Um, opus Cementitium. <laughs> Stephen and I literally uh, got together and we discussed how he wants to shoot it, what his influences. He sent me storyboards, uh, images from ads, films, things that he liked, whether it was work from Michael Mann or Tony Scott. And we both went, yeah, this is definitely something that we want to go towards. Me and Hader will, we, we love the same films, we love the same styles, and it was very weird for us to just straight away go, this is the story that we're telling, visually, this is what I want. And when I started to give him mood boards and stuff like that, he was just like, ugh, he was loving it. And I knew straight away that, that we would get on to that visual hymn sheet very quickly, and we did. In there looking at them. As a director, he's just come in and he's shot the shit out of it, if I'm allowed to say that. 
Um, he's just gone in, shot scene by scene, really, really quick. He knows exactly what he wants. He's, it's like he's editing in his mind. Just do it on a one, it looks great. Hey, just set up something beautiful down there. Get fucking done, boom, out of the cold. Love it. Love it. He's a real filmmaker. He just wants he wants a camera, a bunch of actors, and a and a and a, and a sound man, um, a bit of lighting, and he can make a movie. It's extraordinary. <laughs> okay, still running, still running. I want to do still that running. again. The script is a blueprint. We've got to follow certain bits of that. But if you turn up on the day and an actor's got something that makes the scene better, you have to go with that. You are the leader. You need to take people on that journey. But you need to be open to, you know, the stuff that people have got on the day. Well, I love the idea of this. Mm. We're just kind of watching. Yeah, yeah, watching yeah. To do that, you know, it's like you're just letting him get on with it. Whatever you want, you know, whatever you want, son. And you're kind of almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I look after it. So Nick's throwing little bits in there that I really liked. I liked it, I'm gonna take it. It's gonna make the film better. You know, you can approach him. I mean, he knows what he wants, but he's, you know, he's not precious with his dialogue, which I love, you know I mean? You know, he wrote me this lovely long, he knew I was playing the character of Ronnie. He wrote me this lovely long speech and, and it's, it's flattering, but I just said, look, in terms of the story, in terms of the journey, let's just cut this in half and get Danny on his way, you know? And he was totally up for that. So that's why I say, but these streets are lawless, man. So if you want to, if you want to go and out, and you stand, you've you got to stand yeah. tall. That's it. It leads into better, that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop but that these, line back in. So, yeah. So, but um, but these streets are lawless, man. So if you um, so if you want to take a stand, you've got to be tall. Got to be tall. Taller, taller than, than you've ever before. been before. That's it. Yeah. Put that back in. So, ever stabbed someone before? Them two look at each other. Yeah, okay. There was going to be a cut, but this works nicely now. So. They look at each other and you go, try it out if you like. Yeah, so it'll go into this other bit of dialogue here. Try it out if you like. Now that's a sigsaw, P226. And then go. But you never stabbed someone before. Now that is a sigsaw P226. Yeah, so it's 19 in the clip. It's effective up to 50 metres. Casting the film was interesting because I was very keen not to use too many of the obvious gangster genre usual suspects, as I call them, um, and they're they're all great. Those you know, they all have great faces and they're all great character actors. But I just wanted to make this film have its own unique identity. You know, we got Danny. Danny was Danny was in, and um, we went. So who 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 can we put around Danny? Who can we put around him again to bring out the, that performance? <laughs> Morgan, they executed my fucking parents. Why are you doing exactly the same thing? What is that? Justice. They don't deserve justice. They don't deserve to live. They need their hearts torn out. Me and Jonathan really got into these people and he would bounce people over to me and I'd go, no, nah, that's not who it is. Now I'd throw someone out over, over him and he'd go, I think that's not right. And then we would find certain people and we'd go, totally. It's great to have young actors around me, you know, that, that are up and coming and that are, you know, making me fucking think, whoa, you know, this is the next generation. You know, I've always wanted to work with Danny because I, I love the guy, I think he's so uh, talented. And when I found out I got this and I knew Danny was attached to it, I was just over the moon. I was like, yeah. You got in the back of the car, didn't you? Thinking you're holding all the cards, you mug, but you ain't fuck all, Jimmy fucking Vickers. How long have you been driving for? 10, 20 minutes? You didn't even know, did you? Alistair Petrie I've worked with before. Great fucking actor. Great look about him. Try the salad. He put weight on since last time. Who's talking? Nice to see you, Jules. We've got Michael Ryan, who was in Rock and Roller. We've got Joseph Alton, who was in Game of Thrones. Bruce Payne, um, somebody that we're well to part. You'd never think that we'd be in the same movie together. Roxanne McKee, beautiful actress. You've got Tony Denham, who was in The Football Factory. You've got Emma Sams, who was in Dynasty. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, my mind's going, these guys have been directed by amazing directors. They're about to be directed by you. Are you scared? You get that little voice in your head, that little fear voice. I hate that voice. I tell him to fuck off because he really annoys me and he's the voice that stops people from doing what they truly want to do in life. But for me, the most exciting cast addition, I think, was Vincent Reagan, um, an actor I've always wanted to work with and I've watched with seething jealousy as he's worked for every other independent producer in London and now my turn's come and it's fantastic. I'm a little bit in love with Vincent Reagan. He's, uh, he's got the most mesmerising eyes I've ever seen and he's just one Hell of an actor. I'll come down on you so hard. 
They'll need paint stripper to mop you up. Dyer and I have been friends for a long time. Um, he's one of my good friends. Um, he even kind of played a spoof version of me in a movie once, um, which was a lot of fun. And I've met a lot of actors over the years. I've worked with a lot of actors. And Danny has more charisma than most of them put together. He's, he's a phenomenal movie star. He's a terrific actor. And it's lovely to be doing a project with him that he can really, you know, he is the whole show in Vendetta. He's not on it for a day, he's not in it for five minutes, he's the whole movie. So I've always wanted to work with Danny since Human Traffic, and he's done a few films um, that have, have, have kind of put him in, 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 a, in a bad light, I think, with audiences. But this guy just needs to work, and he's an exceptional actor. He's unbelievably focused. He read this script and just wanted to take it on with both hands. It was a no-brainer for me. As soon as I read it, I was like, yes. So before I even spoke to my agent, I was like, I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck how much money. I don't care what the budget is. Let's get this fucking film made. This is what me and you need to be doing. And it was important that we got on the same page straight away. And he knew who this character was. And I knew who he was. And I said to him, are you willing to completely immerse yourself in this role? And he said, I'm yours. It was all natural. I love all that natural stuff, so just keep that going. There's one bit with the sarin thing, I think it is, but when you no, do no, it next time, I'll, I'll, I'll flag it. I line, that took too long. I want to yeah, be quick. Yeah, yeah, you want to flow be... it, don't you? Yeah, no, I want to flow with it, and I've, 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 I've just forgot the line. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And you'll listen to him, and you trust him. And uh, he, he is a real, he's a rare fucking breed, and I don't know where the fuck he's been for so long, but I'm so glad he's, this is, this is his calling. I'm glad that our, our, our paths have crossed at this point in, in, in both of our careers because, I mean, I, like, I, I would, like I said, work with him for the rest of my fucking life if I could. It's a joy coming to work, you know? This is the shit I'm fucking born to do. Buzz off it like you, you wouldn't believe. London is a very heavy influence, or shall we say East London, Central London, are major backdrops uh, of this film. We're based in Canning Town which some people might say is one of the rougher parts of the city, but it's also uh, an area with a lot of history and with a lot of authenticity, and that was very important. I want to give my audience a visual trip. I want to take them to places where they've never been before. My locations need to work, you know, f for production value for the film, for one. It's like, well, the Bond movies work. Their locations are unbelievable, their cars are unbelievable. And you're watching this film, imagine James Bond cutting around in the living room. You know, if he's in a living room, that living room is the best living room you've ever seen. It's somewhere on Whitehall and it's a government office. It's M's, it's M's living room. And it's like, wow, man, you know? And, and, and for me, I really wanted to apply what I had applied in my previous short films and, and apply it to this. So I said to Jonathan from day one, I said, the key for this film is locations. Let's get some great locations. Let's look around places. Let's find, let's get into the, into the corners of where we are. So the locations that we've had on Vendetta, some of them have been awesome. In fact, most of them so far have been great. Uh, very easy to film, put lights up, etc. Outdoor, exterior, big exterior, nighttime they can be quite problematic, especially lighting them to make them look plausible. That's quite difficult. But anywhere where we've got power and lights available, then um, I think we've managed quite well. Last night we went up and we got this unbelievable dialogue sequence between Griff and Jimmy, played by Michael Ryan and, and, and Danny Dyer. And I love my silhouettes, and they were silhouetted by the night. They were silhouetted by Canary Wharf. And I was like, oh, that, that, that's, that's Vendetta. That is Vendetta right there. You know, we've got our silhouettes of our guys who are this big and this city is behind them and it's like that. And um, I needed to find these places to tell this story because if we're cutting around in pubs, living rooms and car parks, then, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's um, a sad place to be for my audience. The production designer on the movie, Anthony Neal, is a new member of my team. Um, Danny recommended him to me and I met him and uh, we got on instantly. We share a love of cheesy old horror movies and we became firm friends. But he's really pulled it out of the bag. I mean, you know, we were expecting to shoot entirely on location and when we were talking about locations, his attitude was very much just, fuck it, I'll build a set. And that's Caleb's flat and the garage which George and Sandra get burnt down and murdered 
hopefully you've seen the film by now um, otherwise I've just destroyed it and he's gone and done it and they're really good and you know you don't build sets on these kind of low budget movies so he's a real star the main one was Caleb's flat we have this shootout in the film and I wanted to do a shootout Caleb's still up bang. just an odd change yep. bang 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 return fire yep. bang bang Caleb goes down yep. yeah nice. all still intact nice. Katie turns up yeah. Stick your head out. Bang bang. She starts shooting. Yeah. Boom. Bang bang. Yeah? Perfect. Stick your head out. Bang again. Yeah. Bang bang. She's down. It's very easy with these movies um, just to dress everyone in Primark and not really care about it and a lot of costume designers would do that but Lenka, our wonderful costume designer, has really punched above her weight um, and she's a proper designer and I think the film has a very distinct look which she's very much contributed a key part of um, and she's a very clever girl. Everyone knows each other. We all, we, you know, we all make films together. You know, we're all, it's like a family. It's a very close-knit unit. It's been terrific fun with an extraordinary bunch of people, again, all working towards the same end, but there's an intimacy to it, which I think can really, because you're working on effectively a shoestring, it has to be about the work that you're doing. It's gone so quick, um, and the reason why it's gone so quick, everyone's just, everyone's just like a big family on this job, Vinda, so i um, really enjoying it. The other night we were in the gym filming something, it was half two in the morning, it was our first night shoot, and um, we're all there doing competition dips. We're trying to do like tricep dips competition. And Phil Reeves is stood there trying to rally them all up. And usually I'm going, right, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm in the middle of it trying to do, comp oh, I'm really competitive anyway. We're all doing all these tricep dips. Hayden's skipping. Uh, someone else is trying to do um, 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 a bench press. And Phil's like, guys, it's half two in the morning. You know, we'd nearly finished, so it was okay. But he was like, it's half two, what are we doing? And we were all like, yeah, what are we doing? And, you know, we all had a giggle. Bring me my tea <laughs> with one sugar. This is what will happen. Coffee, that's what I said. <laughs> no wonder the poor boy gets it wrong. Don't correct me while I've got a gun to your head. Who's you told? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, oh Jimmy, Jimmy. Detective Saint Tropez. Detective Saint Tropez. Remember? Of the Essex Police. Off yogurt. Off the only someone from fucking Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more shitty fish. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a fucking great thing. Oh, mate, that's it. <laughs> And then, and then he just, you know, he walks off, oh. and end on the Nevin. I'll, yeah. go, I'll give a little tear. I'll give a little tear. One, two, two three. <laughs> and that's how it's been, you know, we're, we're really close, quite a small crew. Um, and we're all calling each other, you know, lizards. Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, little lizard. Well, he was going to call me a lizard. He told he, he was going to set this up. He said he was going to call me a lizard. He didn't know I was going to go in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a phenomenal two weeks, you know. We're on like 480 slates, and we've got kind of five days to go. So we've been moving at an immense speed. But there's a reason we've been moving at that immense speed, because we've got a well-oiled machine. It's been produced well. We've put the hours in. We've put the time in before we've turned up on set. And, and, and I turn up to set knowing what I want. They'll give it fucking put the weapon down because he's just shot Rob. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. You will then, just as as they're about to get into it, your car <laughs> scrambles round here behind. Yeah. You're like, wait, 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 wait. It's our climax tonight. It's a big, big scene. It's the final culmination. Does he get him? Does he not get him? Colonel Leach, he does belong to me when he's taking the law into his own hands in my borough. 
what happens? Is justice served? And if justice is served, um, whose justice is indeed served? It's big in terms of the set that we're shooting on. The location we've got is huge. There's a lot going on. Everybody's there. We've got Alistair Petrie, we've got Danny Dyer, we've got Michael Ryan's going to rock up, we've got Ricky Harnett, we've got the SWAT guys turning up, the guys that I've done a lot of work with in the past, the Sterling lads. Can't wait for tonight because tonight I die. So Joseph's not uh, driven a car for a really long time, apparently. So we're going to just see him drive into the Thames. <laughs> no, actually, well, he's better not going in the Thames. So he's never, he stalled it. So there's a nice scene between me and Danny before he shoots me. Yeah, I just, I just love this. Bam, bam. And he drags him back up. Yeah. Drag him straight back up. Yeah, Get Joseph please. out, because we're not going to shoot Joseph. We need to check our, our, our angles here. Sure. This is a fucking trailer shot, mate. I just want, I want him to come in. I want him to come into a clean frame. Right. <laughs> Three, two, one, action. Yeah, first time on the on the chest. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Hurt. Painful business. <laughs> one of my favourite moments in a movie is the end of Death Wish. Bronson has been drummed out of town. Turns up in a new station, some thugs knock into a girl and knock her luggage over. He picks the luggage up, he pats the girl on the shoulder, points at one of the kids and he goes like that. And it led into four more movies. And the ending of this movie is directly inspired by that. It's our homage to Death Wish. I think people will have a love for Jimmy Vickers and want to see a sequel, most definitely. It definitely is left open. I mean, he's got nothing left in this country, he's on the run. I think that's where the joy is with a sequel, is to see them, you know, you, you really get to know them and then put them in different scenarios, twist the narrative a little bit, have some different gags, have some different set pieces and see how these characters behave in slightly different surroundings. This is the fucking shit I'm meant to be doing. So, um, cheers. Sure, we've got an idea for Vendetta 2, so watch this space.